Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us um, at this very important opportunity to talk about something that is a priority for the state of Minnesota, Minnesota and all of the Minnesotans here. Um, we are here today to address this fundamental importance of a matter to our state and our nation, the protection of religious liberty. As representatives of the people of Minnesota, it is our duty it is our duty to safeguard the rights and freedoms enshrined in the Constitution, including the right of each Minnesotan to freely exercise their religion. Our Muslim neighbors are right now in the middle of Ramadan. This week we began Holy Week with Palm Sunday, just yesterday, and our Jewish neighbors will be celebrating Passovers. They will be celebrating Passover. This is not just an issue of one faith tradition. This is an issue that affects us all. One of the cornerstones of our democracy is the principle of religious freedom. It is guaranteed by the First Amendment of the Constitution, yet despite these protections, we have seen an alarming rise in cases where individuals and organizations of all traditions face persecution because of their religious beliefs. This is why I stand before you today to advocate for the inclusion of a religious exemption in the Minnesota Humans, Human Rights Act. This exemption would ensure that individuals and organizations are not compelled to violate their deeply held religious beliefs during their daily lives. This bill, authored by Representative Harry Niska has been ready to pass for a full month already. Faith leaders and Minnesotans across the political spectrum have expressed the need of this exemption, and yet House and Senate leaders have not brought this bill up for a meeting. Let me be clear, adding this religious exemption back into the Human Rights Act is about upholding the fundamental right of every citizen to live according to their faith without fear of punishment or retribution. Religious freedom is not a partisan issue. It is a fundamental right that must be protected for all citizens regardless of their beliefs. By enacting religious exemption in the Human Rights Act, we can reaffirm our commitment to tolerance, diversity, and the principles of liberty that have made our state great. I urge my colleagues on both sides of the aisle to join me in supporting this vital measure to defend religious liberty in Minnesota. It is time to send a clear message that in our state, religious freedom will always be protected and respected. Thank you for joining us today. Behind me, we have a number of faith leaders that are standing with us in support. We have more out in the hallway, but I wanna turn it over to the bill author, Representative Harry Niska. Thank you. Thank you, Leader Damoth, and uh, thank you to all of you uh, for showing up. Thank you to the media for showing up uh, to address this really important issue. We've talked a lot about uh, things that were broken last year and the reckless uh, rush to pass through um, a lot of new legal language in our state statutes. And this is one of the most important things that needs to be fixed. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Representative Peggy Scott and I co-authored on behalf of the Minnesota faith community an important fix to the Minnesota Human Rights Act religious exemptions that was broken because the current situation as a result of the changes that were made last year is an unprecedented assault on the religious autonomy of faith communities. Faith communities are now left open under Minnesota law to claims to uses of the Minnesota Human Rights Act that weaponize against them the state's uh, opinion about uh, gender identity when it conflicts with that faith communities or those faith communities uh, deeply held religious beliefs. So we tried um, in, a, in a hearing on February 29th in the House Judiciary Committee to fix this by amending House File 4021, which was the Department of Human Rights Policy Bill 
That is the bill that this fix should have been in. The faith community has been working since August to try to get the Department of Human Rights, to get the Walls administration and the Democrat leaders to understand that this was an error that was committed last year. And so far, in two committee hearings, it has been a party line vote. We're hoping, we're hoping, we're asking the Democrats, Democratic leadership, Governor Walls, Democratic legislative leadership, to make, uh, to restore the consensus that we used to have in Minnesota, that no matter what we have in our anti-discrimination laws, no matter what we say in terms of uh, protecting uh, folks on the basis of sexual orientation or other issues of human sexuality, that we are hands off the faith communities, churches and mosques and synagogues and faith schools, that they get to have the autonomy to hold and to adhere to their own beliefs. In that hearing, uh, there was unfortunately a, a shocking level of disrespect shown uh, to the faith community, testifiers from the faith community, just who came to ask for their um, faith to be left alone were, were called disgusting, uh, disturbing, appalling, and that the, their testimony was called hate. So we're asking the Democrats to fix this, and we're asking the Democrats to fix it now. It's important that this is fixed right now. Last Friday was the last day of deadlines. The Democrats refused to take up our bill for a hearing, but they don't need a hearing. They've already heard testimony on this bill. Um, as, as Leader Damoth mentioned, we're in a solemn time for the Minnesota faith community, and it's very important that the Minnesota faith community hears from all of us here at the legislature that religious freedom is still alive and well in the state of Minnesota. I have heard from so many people in the faith community mm -hmm. in Minnesota who are concerned that that is not the message that they've gotten from uh, the changes the Democrats have forced through and their refusal to fix it. So we're asking today, Governor Walls, Speaker Hortman, Leader Murphy, and all of the Democratic leadership to fix this problem now. Thank you. We'll take questions. Leader David, you mentioned about um, in, increased persecution. I mean, if you do you have examples of where this is, where people are being persecuted? Anytime that we take um, the opportunity away for people to exercise their faith in a, in a fair manner um, and with the freedom that they have always had, that is a type of persecution that we are just waiting to have. Um, I will turn it over to Representative Niska to cite maybe a specific example that we are aware of at this time. Thank you. Yes, we are aware uh, since the passage of the changes last year, there is an open investigation against a faith-based school and a religious organization um, uh, that relates specifically to a claim of gender identity discrimination and the, and the broken um, religious exemption that exists here. So this is not, we're not talking about hypothetical theoreticals. We're talking about actual uh, efforts to get the state of Minnesota, to get the Minnesota government to control faith organizations uh, and punish them if their uh, faith views do not align with the views of the majority that passed the, the, the changes last year. Any other questions? Where's that? Um, you said where's the open where's the open investigation? Has there been a complaint filed? Or there, there is, is a complaint filed with the Minnesota Department of Human Rights and an open investigation sitting at the De Department of Human Rights. Um, that's really all I'm at liberty to say. Um, that organization can uh, provide you details if they want, uh, but I have seen the complaint, and it uh, there is a complaint. Could one of the faith leaders here talk a bit about how this has impacted you, um, if you're doing things differently than you were a year ago? If, if anyone would like to, I, I, I don't think any faith leaders are, uh, I, I don't know of any faith organizations that are um, choosing to change their beliefs because of the edict of the state, and I hope none of them are. Amen. Um, and, 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 and frankly, I mean, part of the... Uh, nonsensical nature of this change is that if any faith uh, organization um, is, a, if the state attempts to punish any faith organization uh, along these lines, I don't think that's going to stand up to uh, constitutional scrutiny. So I, it's, it's not clear to me what the point of this is other than to express hostility towards uh, traditional faiths by the DFL, uh, you know, the, the, the Department of Human Rights and the Walls Administration and the uh, uh, and DFL members of the legislature. But at this point, it sounds like the state hasn't absent, except for this open investigation. Nobody's been punished yet? Or the state hasn't tried to punish anyone for? 
My, my understanding is that the investigation is still sitting open at the Department of Human Rights, and they haven't either dismissed it or moved forward with it. But can it like, like Dana asked, is there any, you said you had faith leaders here. Is there anyone who can talk about how this is impacting, how, why this is detrimental? Uh, fr frankly, the idea that um, the state of Minnesota telling faith leaders what they can and can't believe is not detrimental mm -hmm. is offensive. Mm -hmm. Can you give us an example of something that a faith community could do before the law was changed that they can't do now? So, uh, well, faith communities, before the law was changed, had a clear religious exemption for anything related to sexual orientation, and that it was subsumed with, uh, the, the concept of gender identity was subsumed within it. So faith communities were clear that, for example, hiring of uh, ministers or hiring of uh, teachers or other school staff at their schools, that they were uh, to completely free and, and clearly stated in Minnesota statute that they were free to do that in accordance with their faith. Now that is unclear under Minnesota law. There is an investigation, and, 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 and sometimes the process is the punishment. Sometimes going through an investigation or needing to bring a lawsuit to vindicate your constitutional rights is itself the punishment. So it, it is important that, that the Minnesota government, starting with the governor, starting with the Speaker of the House, starting with the Senate Majority Leader, make clear to the Minnesota faith community that they're not trying to punish them for living out their faith. That is what is important. And the fact that the Minnesota, uh, that the uh, Democrat legislators spoke the way they did to the faith leaders who came down just asking to be left alone, I think is, uh, it certainly would be uh, considered harm if it were directed towards any other organization that was being targeted by the Minnesota state government. And the idea that that's not harm itself is I think concerning if that's the attitude from the Minnesota Press Corps. Maybe that ex explains why for the last month uh, there's been no coverage of the hearing that happened on Leap Day in the, in the House Judiciary Committee when we do get coverage about random comments made by, um, you know, minority legislators in, in committees that have no importance. The comments that were made in the House Judiciary Committee were about what the state of Minnesota, the people in charge of the state of Minnesota, think about traditional faith communities. And that needs to change. Mm -hmm. So just to get at, I mean, you haven't mentioned these words specifically, but, and also I'd point out that asking a question is not stating a position. But anyway, um, are you, the point is that traditional <laughs> religious communities want to be free to not hire people who identify as LGBTQ or, well. Traditional faith communities, or all faith communities, should have the right to express uh, their faith doctrine, their faith teachings in who they choose to, to uh, lead their organizations, who they choose to teach their children. So in this particular case, it is the concept of gender identity that is being weaponized against those faith communities in terms of uh, telling them what they can and cannot believe and what they can and cannot live out among those beliefs. But certainly it is the case that Every faith community should have the autonomy to choose what their teachings are and to live out those teachings without the state of Minnesota telling them that they have a different religious belief and that that religious belief, the government's belief, is going to control over the faith community's religious beliefs. Mm -hmm. On the case that you can't, I know you can't discuss the specifics of the case, but does it involve a hiring decision or a admission of a student? It involves a hiring decision. Um, Obviously, this was already an uphill battle to get a hearing in a DFL-led legislature. Now that deadline has passed, is it realistic to expect this could get a hearing? I mean, it would require significantly more traction to, to happen now. Yeah, yes. It, it, what the governor wants, the governor gets. If the governor wants it, the governor will get it. I think we've seen that from the legislature so far. Go back and watch this uh, House Judiciary Committee hearing from Friday if you want a really good example of that. The, the, what the administration wants, the administration gets. If the speaker wants to fix this, the speaker can fix this. Um, and I appreciate that question. One thing to, um, as Representative Niska pointed out, that this could have been fixed already. There was an amendment. Yes, second, first and second deadlines did happen um, on Friday. This easily should have been brought up. I have the bill right here, Representative Niska's bill, House File 3926. It was dropped on February 19th. He requested a hearing on February 26th. February 29th, he actually had the amendment in committee. 
You saw the uh, Senate also heard that in the dark of night, in the middle of the night, in the ju judiciary hearing. If the, if the majority of the state of Minnesota, the majority party in control of the state of Minnesota, wanted to fix this, that was done last year, they easily could have already fixed it. We will today on the House floor be declaring an urgency on this. This is important to all faiths in the state of Minnesota, regardless of what faith that is. This is an important, this is a freedom that was taken away, hopefully as an error, as we've talked about a number of other mistakes that were made last year, tax bill, SRO, many other mistakes that were made. We have been told it was not a mistake, that it was an intentional. We will be declaring an urgency. The majority party in the House of Representatives today has that opportunity to pick up this bill. Like I said, it shouldn't be partisan. They can pick up this bill and we could fix this and restore the rights that were there as of May of 2023, we could do that in just a few minutes. It wouldn't have to be a session that goes on long. It is up to the majority party of the state of Minnesota to fix this right now. And I do appreciate every one of the media that is here today because we have been waiting for coverage on this. And we are so appreciative of the fact that you're going to be reporting this out to Minnesotans so they know what is actually taking place in the state of Minnesota and how our, all of our rights are in jeopardy right now. Specific rule you guys plan to invoke on the floor today? We will be declaring urgency is what we'll do. That is the rule. And so I would say stay tuned. Um, we didn't know if we would be mentioning that here, but stay tuned. Please join us for that. We'll declare that urgency to take up this bill and try to get a vote on this today. Do we have any other questions? Are there any cases you can recall where when the old rule was in place that a faith community was able to defend its actions based on that exception that they were challenged and said, no, the law... The law gives us this exception. Were there cases like that? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not aware of a, of a court case, but the Department of Human Rights throws out cases all the time when they run afoul of the statute. And the fact that the Department of Human Rights hasn't thrown out this case yet um, tells, uh, tells you quite a bit about what's going on. I would point out that the Commissioner of Human Rights is a former board member at one of the advocacy groups that was pushing the changes through last year and is one of the advocacy groups that brings these kinds of complaints. So we're really concerned that, uh, that what Chair Becker Finn said in the Judiciary Committee, that this wasn't an oversight. We're really concerned that there are uh, loud voices, powerful voices in the Democratic Party who are trying, who, who, who purposely were trying to uh, create this uncertainty and uh, problem for faith communities and, and, and punish them using the power of the state. Representative, you're an attorney. Um, will there be grounds for a lawsuit if this doesn't get changed? Yes. Yeah. I think there are, there are likely to be lawsuits, and, and the lawsuits are likely to succeed. That was uh, the, 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 that was the thrust of the comment of, uh, that I was making earlier. I don't understand why uh, those who are trying to push this change would be trying to push it. It's just going to end up in a, uh, probably a series of lawsuits that uh, the state is unlikely uh, to succeed. There is federal uh, case law about the ministerial exception, for example, um, that should protect a lot of these faith organizations, but they shouldn't have to go to federal court to get the Minnesota Human Rights Act to simply say, to simply say the same thing it said before last year. So last year, um, there was a clear uh, religious exemption for sexual orientation, and the concept of gender identity was considered a part of the co larger concept of, of a sexual orientation. That religious exemption was never deleted. So sexual orientation is still uh, a religious exemption under Minnesota law, uh, and, a, and a claim that's just based on sexual orientation is clearly uh, covered by the religious exemption. This just puts the concept of gender identity on the same footing as uh, sexual orientation within Minnesota statutes. It should be pretty simple. It should be a pretty non-controversial uh, fix. Again, it's, it's, it's adding uh, three words in two spots in the Minnesota statutes to put gender identity and sexual orientation on the same footing. Um, we've heard testimony in both the House and the Senate on why this is important. I don't think we need a hearing on this standalone bill. We can just pass it today if the, if the majority wants to do it. Sorry, go ahead, John. You go ahead. Okay. Sure. We're yeah. going to do this Minnesota thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, the, so just to be uh, just to be clear, and I apologize, I arrived a little uh, a few minutes late. Um, was gender identity taken out? And you're asking your bill. I'm reading it right now. Would add it back in, or you want to make clear that gender identity is uh, it, it, in case somebody tried to say that it was something different than sexual orientation, that that is the same, on the same playing field. Yeah, so 
the, the, the way that the Minnesota Human Rights Act dealt with gender identity before last year was it considered it to be part of the broader protected class of sexual orientation. And so when it had the, the sexual orientation religious exemption covered any claims that would have been you know, in the flavor of gender identity claims. What the majority did last year was create a new definition of gender identity and add gender identity as a separate protected class in all the lists of protected classifications. And so what that uh, required in order to update the religious exemption was to also add the concept of gender identity into the religious exemption to make 100% clear that gender identity claims are still treated the same way as it relates to the religious exemption as they were before last year. From 1993, when the concept of sexual orientation was first added to the Minnesota Human Rights Act and these religious exemptions were in place, we just want to restore the way the law worked as it relates to these folks to what hap had been the law in clear statutory law in Minnesota from 1993 until 2023. So let me get it straight. Um, if someone, let's say somebody identifies openly as gay and, they, and they're denied, you're protected on that. But if, they, if they're different gender, or if they're identifying as a different gender than they're, they are born as, you're not protected. If they, if they bring a claim that's characterized, that they, and they can choose to characterize their claim probably as either sexual orientation or gender identity, uh, if they characterize it as sexual orientation, then it's right now, it's clear, and the de Democrats haven't deleted this religious exemption, so maybe they're okay with that, but it's, th these folks are protected from a claim that's labeled as, uh, as sexual orientation, but for reasons that we don't really understand what the rationale is, they're not protected as if that person characterizes it as a claim for gender identity. These are difficult questions of, or controversial questions of sexuality and gender that as Minnesotans, we've recognized that there are good faith, uh, especially traditional faith communities that come to different conclusions on that issue. And frankly, you know, we're talking about a concept of gender that was the consensus in Minnesota 10 years ago. Um, that, that now is being, uh, that's now changed in Minnesota statute and it's now potentially weaponized against faith communities like this. So this is like the smallest, most conservative change that we could have. We're just asking that, we're not asking, we're not trying to repeal the, the, um, the gender identity changes that were made last year. We're just trying to make sure the religious exemption works the way we all thought it would work, and we didn't realize, as a lot of people didn't realize last year, that this was, that they were uh, essentially breaking the way that this religious exemption works in Minnesota law. Outside of hearings, have there been any conversations with DFL colleagues on this that seem at least somewhat uh, supportive of this in any sort of way? Um, we think there are members of the Democratic Party who uh, recognize that this is a change that, the fix that should happen but they're gonna to have to speak for themselves on that. It's gonna take some courage, honestly, for some Democrats uh, to, to stand up to some radical voices in their party who uh, have expressed their support for uh, the change that happened and, and for the fact that uh, religious communities are now um, mm. unsure about whether or not they can live out their faith on these issues. Mm. I think that's all the time we've got. Thank you. Thank you.